Mobility, Essential Forms Framework. This is a presentation of the South Florida Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program, brought to you by Nova Southeastern University. This presentation is designed to prepare you to reimagine and truly transform healthcare, initially for the elderly, but ultimately for all those seeking to achieve optimum well being. I encourage you to put your patient's priorities central to your delivery of healthcare in order to promote a healthcare system that reseats your patient as the driver in their own wellness journey. Mobility is a core concept of age friendly healthcare as it is vital to the well being of your patient and the focus of our presentation today. I bring to your attention the obvious to quote Dr. B.J. Miller, a hospice and palli palliative medicine physician who is best known for his 2015 TED talk on what really matters at the end of life. Healthcare was designed with diseases, not people at its center. It's a design best suited to monetize illness rather than promote wellness. During the later stages of life, when core issues that really matter are distilled, becoming much clearer, it is autonomy, community, mentation, and mobility that are central to well being. The age friendly healthcare system seeks to transform the healthcare system from a disease centered system to a people centered system in order to help the patient and achieve and maintain the sense of well being that flows from core values. Mobility is one of those areas that impact the totality of the whole. In the care of the elder adult, mobility may often be relegated to backseat care due to the fact that there are many other often more immediate gaps in healthcare to address such as heart and lung issues and the various CMS metrics. However, it has been shown that the loss of mobility has profound social, psychological and physical consequences. It easily may be the difference between living at home or living in a facility. It may be the difference between achieving what matters most to your patient versus making healthcare metrics central. Think about it. If you are unable to mobilize, then you are unable to go shopping, unable to meet with friends, unable to go out to dinner or go to the movies, thereby becoming dependent on others to get you places. You hate to be a burden on your family, so you stay home, become a recluse. With immobilization comes incontinence because you can't easily get to the bathroom. You develop urinary tract infections and skin infections. The list goes on. It's easy to understand why depression and hopelessness sets in. So let's get moving. I have no relevant affiliations or disclosures. The Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program is a grant funded through the Healthcare Resources and Services Administration. One of the major goals of the grant is the promotion of age-friendly healthcare. An overview of the age-friendly health system. Institute for Healthcare Improvement, aligning care with the four M's. There's a misconception among clinicians that the four M's detract from more important metrics like blood pressure, lipid and glucose control, fall risk, et cetera. I'd like to suggest that implementation of the four M's will aid in improving those other very important metrics. You will notice that the four M's require a team approach to fully implement them. No one provider is required or is able to do every aspect of the four M's. Other members of the healthcare team are often designated and better qualified to screen and treat patients' healthcare priorities. With training, some parts of the four M's may be completed by um, registered nurses, medical assistants, and other ancillary staff. What matters concerns respect, respecting the individual's autonomy, values, and what matters most to them. Medication includes all medications, whether prescribed, over the counter or supplements taken and how they impact what matters, mentation and mobility. Mentation concerns memory, mood, feelings of depression, isolation, loneliness, and ultimately mentation impacts function, encourages patients to be on guard, encourage patients to be on guard for unhealthy emotional or mental patterns. Mobility is all about moving around safely, allowing your patient to do what matters. Encourage them to consider the ways mobility impacts their lives. Exercise is key to maintaining mobility as we age. 
it is vital for your patients to develop a mobility plan and goals in order for them to maintain the quality of life desired. Age Family Healthcare is a concept pioneered by the Johnny Hartford Foundation, the Institute for Healthcare Improvement in partnership with the American Hospital Association, the Catholic Health Association of the United States, Kaiser Permanente, Trinity and Ascension. My goal is to explain the forum's framework and how aiding mobility applies to the establishment of an age-friendly health system. Clear priorities that are understood by patients, their family members, caregivers, and clinicians can drive care that is less burdensome, better integrated, and most importantly, consistent with what matters most to patients. Establishing priorities in collaboration with your patient is important in clarifying and directing goals of care. Patient Priorities Care website provides training videos to aid in training ancillary staff to interact with patients to elicit what matters most to them. Mobility, why is it one of the four ends anyway? Mobility benefits mood, sleep, appetite, relief of pain, heart, lung, and brain function, not to mention vision. No medication, procedure, or treatment is as useful as maintaining, as maintaining mobility in the health and well-being of the individual. Mobility interacts with mentation, medications, what matters most, most health and life goals are activities requiring mobility. Mobility is the third M, encompassing not just fall prevention and safety, but it is also at the core of function. And function is vitally important to older adults who tend to have multiple chronic conditions. Mobility is necessary for, for participation in meaningful social, cultural, and physical activities. Mobility promotes healthy aging and ability to care for self. Those in the early phases of functional decline benefit most from preventative interventions. These would be those who comment that they used to be able to walk a distance that they can no longer walk. With modest intervention, they would be most likely to enjoy functional benefits. Some of you may be wondering why focus on mobility versus fall prevention. Mobility focuses on what matters. Mobility supports function, mobility, prevents depression and delirium, and mobility prevents falls. What works for mobility also works for fall and delirium prevention. Since falls with injury became a Centers for Medicare Medicaid Services non-reimbursable hospital-acquired condition, there has been an uneasy tension between promoting mobility and preventing falls, but it's important to consider what work, that what works for mobility also works for fall and delirium prevention. Good mobility requires integrative functioning of the musculoskeletal system, the cardiorespiratory system, sensory and neural systems. Enhancing mobility optimizes each of all the other symptoms. Some evaluations of mobility are fundamental in gerontology as they identify potential impairments and reduce morbidity. Assessments of gait, balance, and transfer in elderly adults plays a valuable role in maintaining healthy aging and preventing a decline in mobility. There are several quick mobility tests that can be easily performed in the office or potentially as part of triage after training ancillary staff. Assessment of gait, balance, and function in elderly is useful to detect early signs of decline and assist in guiding therapeutic interventions. These three tests are part of the STEADY algorithm. STEADY is an acronym for Stopping Elderly Accidents, Deaths, and Injuries. TUG is a measure of functional mobility. The 30-second chair stand test is for leg strength and endurance in older adults. It's part of the Fullerton Functional Fitness Test Battery. The four-stage balance test is used to assess static balance in four different standing positions that should be held without moving for 10 seconds. If they are not able to meet the measure, they are at risk for a fall and in need of an intervention. Time to up and go. The benefits of evaluation is that you can address mobility limitation before it impedes your patient's quality of life. The tug test is highly recommended for fall risk assessment since it includes the basic everyday movements and daily life tasks, standing, walking, and turning, 
require daily. Cohort studies affirm the association between gait, speed, and survival in older adults. Primary healthcare providers are asked to assess all patients who are over 65 years of old for falls, gait, and balance disorders using the timed up and go test annually. The timed up and go test is done an average of three trials. The patient wears regular footwear and may use a walking aid. Cue the patient to begin with go. Begin timing when the patient's bottom leaves the chair and stop timing when the bottom touches the seat at the end. The patient rises from the chair, walks three meters or 10 steps, turns, walks back, sits in a chair at a comfortable, safe pace. Those patients with scores greater than 10 seconds or who demonstrate unsteadiness performing this task require further assessment. If limitations are present, refer to physical therapy, occupational therapy, consider social service assistance, order assistive devices such as canes, walkers, and wheelchairs as indicated. The 30-second chair stand test is a measure of leg strength and endurance in the older adult. This is a, another quick and easy test to perform. There are several variations of this test. It is used to quantify lower limb strength and muscle force examine functional status and evaluate balance in older adults. This test was originally performed by measuring the time needed to stand up and down 10 times from an unarmed chair while keeping one's arms folded across the chest. The seven, the four stage balance test is used to assess static balance in four different standing positions that should be able to be held without moving for 10 seconds. If they are not able to meet the measure, then they are at risk for a fall. So what works and what doesn't? After assessment, act to refer with a goal of improving balance and strength in your patient. Physical therapy or occupational therapy evaluation of the home environment works. Assistive devices work to prevent falls, increase mobility, frequent movement throughout the day, including exercises, also, minimize psychoactive medications and institute proactive interventions. If mobility deficit is revealed during the visit, refer immediately. Some examples of proactive interventions would be pre-hospital strengthening, also called prehabilitation. It's a rather new intervention used in England and in some parts of the United States to initiate therapy in preparation for a hospital procedure or surgery shown to decrease morbidity um, delirium in patients who are undergoing procedures or surgeries. Refer your patients for physical therapy and occupational therapy in the early phases of decline, which would motivating the individual to engage in exercise, initiate exercise on their own. This may include physical therapy sessions with follow-up counseling calls by physical therapy to encourage and monitor progress. Accountability really works. Occupational therapy helps those with physical, sensory, or cognitive problems to improve ability to perform activities of daily living. What has not been shown to work are later interventions, bed alarms, slippers, toileting alone. Use physical therapy or occupational therapy to focus on improving strength and balance and consider progressive resistance training and balance. Some risk factors for decline are hospitalization. It's been shown that immobility while being ill or simply hospitalized for a procedure may result in critical mobility decline, meaning the elder adult may never re recover to pre-illness levels of mobility. Sensory deficits, hearing and visual impairments and neuropathy correlate with poor balance and increased fall risk, which is compounded by multiple sensory impairments. It is very important to rehabilitate vision and hearing because those senses provide vital feedback about the environment needed for safe mobility. Falls, even falls without injuries increase the risk, the risk of walking reduction due to avoidance of walking with inevitable um, ability to walk. Environment environmental barriers to mobility can also contribute to mobility decline among elder people. Long distances between benches for resting, hills, 
poor street conditions, busy traffic, poor lighting, unsafe environments. Communities need to promote accessibility and safe environments, but, but that's a much larger concern. The pandemic has changed the lives and decreased the mobility of everyone, but especially the elderly who can least afford it. Obesity and chronic diseases such as arthritis and diabetes make ambulation problematic. Depression leads to self-neglect and sometimes dementia. The need to address depression and the physical sources of depression cannot be overstated. After assessment of risk factors, act to refer to medicate risk factors. As individuals age, important things like family, community, sharing and helping each other come into focus and become much clearer. The little things don't bother them as much. They have a huge capacity for contentment and joy, but we as providers must link arms with them in those times of need. Trouble with walking and mobility impairments produces undesirable physical, cognitive, and social consequences for older adults. Lack of mobility will cause a decline in ability to perform self-care, leads to a loss of independence, physical disability, injuries, institutionalization, and an increase in hospital admissions. Hence, the activities of daily living, which include mobility, start to diminish with age, leading to depression, isolation, and death. For all these reasons, healthcare professionals should be keen to recognize subjects who have problems, as well as to determine the type of necessary interventions and their timing in order to assist those under their care to optimize mobility in order to maintain self-care, connections with family and friends, and to do what matters to them in the days, months, or years remaining. Credits and references. These are some excellent references that I found. Um, there are many others, but I recommend these to you. And remember, you're only old once. We need to make it as good as we can. Thank you for joining me today. Please complete the survey to record your attendance.